The overall goal of this procedure is to perform transcranial magnetic stimulation to elicit motor evoked potentials, first in the flexor carpi radialis muscle and then in the erector spinae muscles. This is accomplished by first preparing the skin overlying the respective muscles for electromyographic recordings and biomechanically positioning the subject for transcranial magnetic stimulation. The hotspot is identified as the portion of the stimulation location over the motor cortex that elicits the largest motor evoked potentials. The next step is to determine the motor threshold. At this point, single pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation is performed to quantify motor evoked potential amplitude and silent period duration. Paired pulse transcranial magnetic stimulation is also performed to quantify intracortical facilitation and short and long interval intracortical inhibition. Ultimately, in vivo indices of corticospinal and corticocortical excitability in humans can be assessed via combined use of transcranial magnetic stimulation and electromyography. Generally, individuals new to this method may struggle because it can be difficult to derive and understand the subtle technical aspects of TMS from a written description only. And simply attempting to learn through a trial and error approach when experimenting with and testing human subjects poses many difficulties and challenges. Demonstrating the procedures, in addition to myself, will be David Goss, Jr., a researcher working within the Ohio Musculoskeletal and Neurological Institute. Before beginning the TMS experiment, first screen the subject following the screening guidelines set forth by the Institute for Magnetic Resonance Safety, Education and Research. Exclude individuals with a family history of epilepsy or seizures. Next, place surface electrodes over the subject's FCR muscles on the forearm using a bipolar electrode arrangement. Electrodes should be located longitudinally over the muscle on shaved and abraded skin. Also place a lycra cap to mark stimulation locations on the head. Now have the subject sit with the left arm resting in an extended position in a Biodex System 4 dynamometer. In this protocol, we will stimulate the right side of the brain, which controls the left arm. To stimulate the FCR muscles, place a 70mm figure 8 TMS coil tangential to the scalp and 45 degrees to the midline so that the induced current flows in a lateral posterior to medial anterior direction. Next, subtly move the TMS coil around in very small increments to determine the stimulation location that elicits the largest motor evoked potential for the FCR muscle. Once located, Mark this area with indelible ink on either the scalp or a lycra cap. Now quantify the motor threshold for the FCR by delivering single pulses at gradually increasing stimulation intensities until motor evoked potentials have peak to peak amplitudes greater than 50 microvolts in more than 50% of the trials. To examine the motor evoked potential amplitude of the FCR, deliver a single TMS pulse to the previously determined hotspot at an intensity equal to 130% of motor threshold and calculate the peak to peak amplitude. This outcome can be normalized to the maximal compound muscle fiber action potential observed following supramaximal electrical stimulation of the median nerve. When a TMS pulse to the cortex is delivered during muscle contraction, it will produce a motor evoked potential followed by electrical quiescence before activity resumes that is indicative of corticospinal inhibition. This is commonly referred to as the silent period. To quantify the FCR corticospinal silent period, deliver a single TMS pulse to the hotspot at an intensity equal to 130% of motor threshold while the study participant is performing a wrist flexion muscle contraction at 15% of maximal strength. <laughs>
To determine intracortical facilitation using paired pulse TMS for the FCR muscle, first determine the stimulus intensity needed to elicit a motor evoked potential that is between 0.5 to 1 mV. Next, deliver a sub-threshold conditioning pulse, 70% of motor threshold, 15 milliseconds before a supra-threshold test pulse. A conditioning pulse delivered at this time period prior to the test pulse will increase or facilitate the amplitude of the motor evoked potential more than a single unconditioned pulse of the same intensity. Next, use paired pulse TMS to quantify short interval intracortical inhibition using the same procedure as described for measuring intracortical facilitation with the exception that the interstimulus interval between the two pulses should be reduced to 3 milliseconds. The conditioning pulse delivered at this time period prior to the test pulse will decrease or inhibit the amplitude of the motor evoked potential more than a single unconditioned pulse of the same intensity. To quantify long interval intracortical inhibition using paired pulse TMS, deliver two identical supra threshold test pulses that are separated by 100 milliseconds. Here, for the FCR muscle, the motor evoked potential associated with the second pulse will be smaller or inhibited more than that associated with the first. Next, for the erector spinae muscle stimulation, have subjects sit in a swivel based chair with the thigh at 90 degrees relative to the trunk, the lower leg at about 45 degrees relative to the thigh, the lumbar spine in a neutral upright posture and the hand resting in the lap. For the erector spinae muscles, use an electrode arrangement located longitudinally over the muscles at the L3, L5 vertebral level on shaved and abraded skin. To comfortably locate the cortical erector spinae muscle stimulation location, here we use anthropometric measurements to identify the vertex of the skull. Find the intersection of the skull in the sagittal plane between the nasion and inion, and the coronal plane between the tragus and mark this as the vertex. To stimulate the erector spinae muscles, use a double cone coil which has greater penetration depth and hence can reach the representation of these muscles deeper in the homunculus. Here, the coil is positioned such that the current flows in an anterior to posterior direction. The coil here is custom modified with a laser attachment system to assist us in subsequent repositioning of the double cone coil. To determine the motor threshold for the erector spinae muscles, the previously demonstrated method for the upper limb should not be used, as stimulation to the back muscles is not well tolerated. Instead, begin the TMS protocol by delivering an initial single pulse at 50% of the maximum stimulator output to determine if this stimulus intensity is above or below motor threshold. To examine the motor evoked potential amplitude of the erector spinae muscles, deliver a single TMS pulse to the vertex at an intensity 40 or 50% above the submotor threshold intensity. These motor evoked potentials cannot be normalized because peripheral nerves innervating the ES muscles are not accessible to electrical stimulation. It should be noted that when stimulating the ES muscle group, several other muscle groups are also visibly and dramatically stimulated concomitantly, including the muscles of the lower extremity, which are represented within the same general region of the homunculus. To use paired pulse TMS to determine intracortical facilitation for the erector spinae muscle group, the conditioning pulse intensity should be set to the observed submotor threshold intensity, being either 40% or 50% of stimulator output, and the test pulse intensity should be set to 40% above the submotor threshold level, being 80% or 90% of stimulator output. Next, to quantify short interval intracortical inhibition, use the same procedure as described for measuring intracortical facilitation, with the exception that the interstimulus interval between the two pulses should be reduced to 3 milliseconds.
When the experiment is complete, assist with the removal of the electrodes and lycra cap and be sure to thank your subject for participating. The EMG traces seen here represent the motor evoked potential response to gradually increasing stimulus intensities, represented as a percentage of stimulator output, or SO. Note that at the lower intensities, very small MEPs were elicited, but that at 32% SO, an MEP was elicited that reached motor threshold. The silent period is observed when a subject performs a slight contraction and a single stimulus is applied to the motor cortex. The first part of the silent period is due to spinal cord inhibition and the latter part is attributed to cortical inhibition, specifically GABA B receptors. Here we see the change in motor evoked potential sizes with paired pulse TMS of the FCR muscle. Measurement of short interval intracortical inhibition or SICI and intracortical facilitation or ICF can be seen. And here we see an example of EMG traces from the erector spinae muscles and the measurement of short interval intracortical inhibition and intracortical facilitation. Finally, here we see an example measurement of long interval intracortical inhibition or LICI. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to perform single pulse and paired pulse TMS as applied to the flexor carpi radialis muscle as well as the erector spinae musculature. Of note, these demonstrations in these muscle groups are only selected examples of TMS being used to study the human neuromuscular system. Don't forget that working with human subjects can place individual's health at risk. It is important to ensure that it's safe for an individual to be exposed to a strong magnetic field, and care should always be taken when performing this procedure.